So I got all excited a moment ago as I walked over here because there's a nice big patch in with the sulphur tufts of what I thought might be sheathed wood tuft again, which we've covered the Quarinomyces mutabilis. And as I got closer, I noticed that some of the caps were a little, we call this campanulate, a little bell shaped. And they weren't really very two tone, though there are some over on the other side there, I don't know if you can see from here, that are a little bit. Um, and I started to think that they probably weren't, but this is a lovely thing to make a video for you because it's something that I warned you about on the Quarinomyces uh, video, on the, the sheathed wood tuft video. So these look to me like they're probably Gallerina marginata. And these are known as funeral bells. Um, bell because they can be quite bell shaped and funeral because they contain amatoxins, which are potentially deadly. Um, the jury's out on how many you would have to eat of these, but you certainly wouldn't want to try any. Um, and if you ate enough, you could be in, in really serious trouble. So to differentiate them from the Quarinomyces, the ones that we like to eat, uh, the sheathed wood tuft, mostly we're going to need to look underneath. So I'm gonna take this one and try not to destroy any features for you and put it as usual on my leg because oh, usually my phone lets me focus here. So like the sheathed wood tuft, this has uh, similarly coloured gills often. Um, they can be paler than this when they're young. Um, actually, I'll get a young one to show you. Let's pop him there and then a lovely little young specimen. So it's actually coming out a lot oranger on my phone than it is in reality. There we go. They can be quite a similar gill colour to the Quirinomyces. Um, and they have a little ring, which is very similar. But this one is not booted. You can see that the texture above and below, where are we? The, the ring zone there is very similar. Um, it's fibrillose. Sometimes it has a kind of... <laughs> I am quite near a road again. Uh, sometimes it has a kind of... Uh, almost kind of zebra-y pattern. This is not the most obvious example of that. Perhaps this stipe that's left from one. Can you see that? So it can have kind of patterns but it hasn't got scales. And the ring zone on these are quite fragile. Um, and we know that Quirinomyces, as they get older, do seem to uh, disintegrate a bit as well. <clears throat> um, but yes, these grow in a much less uh, clustered way. So some of them are, are slightly clustered together, but if you look, they still have their own points of attachment they're not all coming out from the same place oh that's a better example of the kind of zigzaggy zebra pattern I was talking about um and often they're quite scattered along the substrate that they're on so you can see there's lots of single ones or ones with just a couple and it's quite a spread out pattern between that and this not being a sheathed booted uh stipe so it hasn't got scaly underneath the ring zone and smooth above. It's very similar above and below. Um, you haven't got, mostly haven't got the two-toned effect here, although I have seen a few that have a little bit like that. Um, some of them have this lovely bell shape that I was talking about, the funeral bell, um, but a lot of them don't. So you see that that's almost not noticeable and some of them won't be noticeable at all. They'll just be like convex and not noticeably bell shaped at all. Um, the other thing that I find really really obvious to me is the smell of them. So we talked about the smell of Quirinomyces before being really pleasant, quite kind of perfumed, quite floral almost, um, 
almost a bit like bluets, but not quite as orange juicy. It's a really, a really fragrant mushroom. Whereas these smell, yeah, a bit rancid, a bit like slightly decaying leaf litter and old flower. Generally not pleasant at all. So I'm going to suggest that before you start eating Quirinomyces, before you start eating sheathedwood tuft, you try to find some of these. They're not terribly uncommon, so you will have a chance of finding them. Um, and just get to know the features of these ones, the smell of them, the look of them, how they grow. Um, I mean, these ones are, are quite lined on the margin. I don't think that they always are, and it's not showing very well uh, on this camera. Yeah, you can just see. Um, get to know that that stipe difference, the growth habit, the smell of them, uh, as much information as you possibly can in terms of how variable they are, what they look like. We used to think that Gal Gallerina marginata was at least three different species because it can look quite different. Sometimes it's slipperier on top, sometimes it's matte on top. It, it can be quite different and quite variable within the species. Um, and once you've gotten to know these, you're likely to feel a lot more comfortable about eating the sheath wood tuft when you get to that point. Um, because it can be quite scary and they do look quite similar. Um, yeah, and I want you to be as comfortable as possible. I'm going to go because something big's coming. Do please press subscribe. We're nearly at a thousand subscribers at the moment and that's very exciting. Uh, and if you're in Sussex, I'm still, I have one or two more fungi courses this year, but I'm going to be doing um, vouchers that you can buy for Christmas gifts for loved ones uh, starting in the next week or so. I'm just finishing the design for them. Um, and yeah, enjoy your foraging. It is beautiful out there at the moment, but it's really important to be as aware as possible of the lookalikes uh, for the things that you're foraging for. And this is a particularly good example of one that could easily be mistaken if you're not clear about the details. It's all about the details with fungi foraging, not just the look of something. Enjoy.